So hello and welcome to another unexpected extract from my brand new uh, book, uh, Calm Cure. Here it is. And um, this time I want to talk about relationships. In, in the book there's chapters on the core main issues people uh, are dealing with in their life and uh, the... <laughs> and relationships is a massive uh, chapter. Uh, in fact, when I was writing the book, we were trying to keep to our word count because as you can see, we're trying to make a smaller book this time that packed a punch, uh, but really had, was condensed in, its, uh, in the amount of words that I had. And so I, I wrote what was in my heart to share. I sent it to my editor with a note saying, I know there's too much here, but please edit uh, the book. Uh, as you see fit and let me know if there's certain things that uh, you think we can take out or whatever. She wrote back and with this chapter she wrote, I'm sorry I can't find a single thing to take out of this uh, this chapter. And so that was really lovely feedback and it really inspired me that um, and encouraged me that what we were sharing in this uh, chapter was really important. So what I want to do for this uh, Facebook Live is to uh, share an extract from the relationships chapter. I'm going to read a few paragraphs from it and then maybe expand upon uh, whatever I feel inspired to do so. So does that sound okay? And if you have any questions or anything throughout this, if you're watching live, please do ask me if you have any issues in relationship and how you can apply the calm cure technique to relationships. So, <clears throat> allow me to begin. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this little unexpected extract from uh, the new book. So the chapter is called Relationships. The tagline or subtitle is called uh, conflict to connection. Conflict to connection. And it starts like this. Over 7 billion people currently live on planet Earth. As recently as the 1930s, there were only 3 billion. You don't have to be a mathematician to see the simple fact that there are now a lot more people in the world to cohabit peacefully with than ever before. Yet despite the potential implications of growing population numbers, what's most important is the relationship you have with yourself, your nearest and dearest, and the spectrum of souls that happen to cross your path each day. One of the main reasons why relationships are such a tricky landscape to navigate lovingly is that there aren't ever two people on earth who are exactly, exactly the same and would agree on absolutely everything. With different upbringings, cultures, beliefs, values, habits, preferences, opinions and even gods, we may live in the same planet but collectively we see, hear, feel and experience over seven billion different worlds. And then I have a quote that says, we are not meant to agree on absolutely everything and others should not be and do what you think they should. Everybody is born free to have a unique experience of life. So how on earth can we all get on? Using Calm Cure, you can clear any conditioned conflicts that you can, so that you can move towards being more perfectly loving instead of trying to make people morph into your ideas of perfect. And I think it's a really important part, you know, that the calm cure is about clearing the conditioning that's causing us to be in conflict with uh, certain things showing up and, and, and how life shows up. And uh, it's about, you know, so that you, you can be more perfectly loving instead of trying to make people morph into your ideas of perfect. By love, I'm referring to the only love that really exists, unconditional love. Most of the people I meet, including myself, struggle at times to love all parts of themselves, and that's why they find it so hard to love others too. They are entangled in a conditional form of mind-based love that consists of judgments, requirements, and hoops that need, jump, need to be jumped through, either by themselves or others, so that they are deemed lovable. I think that's a really important to, uh, point. You know, it's like our mind and the, all these requirements and conditions, they're making ourselves and other people or our minds are making other, other people and ourselves have to jump through loads of hoops so that they're deemed lovable. And, uh, th and like I'm going to say, this isn't love. It's just one big performance, including a pile of masks, mistaken meanings, and a disconnection from the truth. So that's like the, in the introduction to that chapter. And then um, go on and, and to share a, a part called uh, Relationship Reflections. And in there I say, your, your relationships with others are a perfect reflection of your relationship with yourself. As long as you're in conflict with who you currently are, you will project that outwards and find the same conflicts showing up in your external relationships too. 
Meaning, if you are resisting your present incarnation due to attachments to some ideal idea of the person you think you should be, you will remain separate from love. Furthermore, if you are waiting for your mind to decide that you are lovable, then you will also end up waiting a very long time. Remember, your mind uses judgments to make sense of reality. So there is a high probability that you'll never you may never satisfy its criteria for love. To love unconditionally, you therefore need to get to know and be in harmony with the full spectrum of yourself and others, which again is possible with the power of self-awareness. And so earlier in, in the book, I talk about how conflict is the core of problems, but awareness is the heart of healing. And I talk about how by being self-aware, my definition of self-aware is to be aware of the aspect of yourself that is aware. Right now, as you're watching this, Yes, as a mind might be thinking about it, but there's an awareness that's watching. It's watching your mind, the thoughts you're having about it, but the awareness is also watching uh, this moment as it's occurring. And that awareness is aware of your thoughts, aware of your emotions, aware of your physical body, aware of other people, and that awareness, believe it or not, is a still, silent observer. That observer is always calm, always well, and when you start to become more self-aware, i.e. you're aware of the aspect of yourself that is aware, Instead of feeling your thinking all the time, you start to experience what your awareness is like. And your awareness is still and quiet and calm. And it's, it's a presence within you. A presence we tend to not become, be aware of if we're just aware of putting all our attention on the mind. But when we remove the attention from the mind, we put it back on our awareness, we discover that this awareness is the inner presence of love. I talk about this uh, a little bit later on in the uh, book when I say that being self-aware you naturally discover that your awareness is an unconditional all-allowing, all-encompassing, all-embracing, enduring presence of love. Amazingly you can find that the presence of your inner being is love. Or in other words, at your core you are the love that you have been seeking from external means. You are the love that you've been seeking from external means. This enables you to live in love engaging everyone with an attentiveness upon the inner being of love that you are. And then I say, uh, until I discovered this for myself, I love you had become a question. I love you? I would graspingly ask to check that I was loved by hearing the words back. If there was ever a slight pause and that I love you too didn't return as fast as a boomerang on speed, I would freak out. What's wrong? Are we okay? What can I do? Why don't you just love me as I am? I'm a good person, you know. My fear and resultant insecurity, neediness and jealousy ruined a series of perfectly good relationships. So, this, this chapter on relationships is, is about helping you do two main things. The first thing is to uh, clear the, the conditioning that might be causing you to be in conflict. Uh, these subtle uh, requirements that you place on yourself and others so that life and other people and yourself are deemed lovable. You can clear that conditioning but also to invite you and encourage you to stop looking for love outside yourself. If you're looking for love outside yourself, then fear kicks in very quickly. Because if you're looking for love outside yourself, it can be taken away. And so we get very graspy and needy and jealousy can show up. And uh, we can start playing games to get attention and to have people prove that they love us and stuff. We don't want that sort of performance-based uh, relationship. We don't want performance-based love. We want unconditional true love. That's what we are hungry for. That's what we're searching for. Uh, that's what so many people are searching for. Um, because they have such an identification in their mind and the separate me with all their thoughts and opinions and ideas and personalities and identities, because they're so identified in the individual me, they've lost connection with oneness. And so ultimately I believe life is a return to oneness. Life is a return to oneness. And we get to see through our relationships, which are here to help us to be more conscious, which our Eckhart Tolle once said, we're here through our relationships to see um, where we're not loving unconditionally. You know, Anthony DeMello, in one of his, my favorite books, said that we're here to learn how to love the world, not change it. You know, and I think we're here to learn to love ourselves, not constantly have to change ourselves so that we fit our mind's ideas of what's lovable. And so I really urge you to, uh, um, if you would like more love in your life, then make sure you're not trying to take it from external but learn to rest into the inner presence of being that you are instructions to do that are in the book um, rest into the inner presence of being that you are 
because you'll discover that as an inner presence of love. And when you're experiencing love on the inside, it can no longer be taken away. And you get to love with an open palm. You get to be free and single. You get to be free and in a committed relationship. You get to be free because you've moved from conflict to true connection. And so in this book, I um, also, in the chapter of relationships, I also go on to talk about what limits love. I have a whole section, a whole page on what limits love. And in that, area, in that page, or in that section of the chapter, I share uh, love limiters. Now these love limiters, I was so... I've done every single one of them, by the way, so I'm not like talking from all, you know, uh, high ground or moral high ground or anything. I was able to write about it because I've done all of these things at some point. Um, and so, these are the things that limit our love. These are the um, these are the the, the, the habits of of conflict-based relationships. They're, they're the habits that tend to happen when we're not living in love, living aware of the inner presence of love. I've got way too many to share. Uh, in this uh, short video. Um, uh, there's actually over 20 uh, that I came up with. But I thought I'd share a couple of them so you get an idea of what that uh, area of the book is about. So, one of the, one of the love limit limiters is expecting. Expectations are often not openly expressed and the, other, and the other person is left oblivious. Nonetheless, you then make it their fault for failing to meet your expectations. Conflicts occur when your expectations are not met. So, and for every one I share, I, I give a question to help you uh, get an answer to and then uh, use the CAM cure to resolve. So the question for this one is, what expectations do I have that are not being met and how does it feel within, how does it make me feel when I don't get what I expect? I'll say that again. What expectations do I have that are not being met and how does it make me feel when I don't get what I expect? So you tune in, you check out what it makes, how it makes you feel and you clear the... Uh, the, the feelings around uh, that happen within you when your expectations are not met. If you are, get peace with that, you won't be attached to the expectations. There will be more peace with them and they, won't, they, just, they will just uh, naturally fade away. Uh, another one uh, I share that's jumping out on the page is comparing. Comparing. You compare your relationship with past partners, other friends or family members, your ideas about how, how loved ones should be or couples who appear to be more in love or happier. Conflict arises when some other relationship appears to be better. Okay, And what comparisons am I making and how does it make me feel when other relationships appear to be better? Again, if you feel less than or like you're missing out or sad or you know helpless or whatever that come up for you, you'd want to get peace with that and then that whole habit of comparing uh, you may find just naturally starts to fall away, if not just completely falls away. Uh, what other ones shall I share? Uh, mind reading, um, attempting to accurately predict what someone else is thinking, why they did what they did, what their actions mean, etc. The kids prefer dad because they went to the shops with him instead of staying home with me. Uh, ask, what mind reads am I making and how does it make me feel uh, to do so? Uh, another one is taking, uh, engaging relationships with a what's in it for me attitude. If you're taking, you end up in conflict due to I think I disappeared, but I'm back again. Uh, so I was talking about taking. Uh, engaging relationships with a what's in it for me attitude. If you're taking, you end up in conflict due to the inevitably being let down at some point. Uh, it is also a performance-based relationship, which is not love-based. And so, uh, what do I believe is lacking within me that I need to take from others? And how does it make me feel to lack it? Okay. So there's literally 20-odd uh, habits of unconsciously conflicted relationships, I highly recommend uh, you find out what these are to make sure you're not doing any of them. Now, what can you do if you want to find out more? Well, if you go to my blog on my website, uh, you'll see a, an article there where I share 12 of them. So if you want to read out, find out more of these 12, then go to my blog. It's sandynewbeing.com forward slash Sandy's blog. And there's no apostrophe, it's just Sandy's blog. Um, so you can go to the blog and you can read... Uh, 12 of them uh, and uh, find out more about them there or you can grab a copy of the book and uh, you can read all, get all access to all 20 and make sure uh, that you move from uh, conflict to true uh, connection in your relationships. I don't know anyone that couldn't do with improving 
our relationship in their life. So I think this is a very relevant chapter to everyone, if we're honest eh, with ourselves. And then to bring the chapter uh, further on and to provide solutions, uh, I, I share a, a part called um, Love Without Limits. And you'll see the first one on that, uh, the first, first bit of advice is to be the person you want to love. Be the person you want to love. I share there that uh, people try to take from others what they don't experience within themselves. Ooh, that's a big one. Just sit, that, sit with that for a second. People try to take from others what they don't experience in themselves. So if you're experiencing, uh, if, you, if you feel that you lack anything inside yourself, you're going to find yourself putting pressure on your relationship to try and take from others what you actually are believing is lacking within you. You don't need to do that. You can find it within yourself, and when you do, you no longer have to take it from other people, and they're, they're off the hook. If you're of the opinion that someone else should be kinder, communicative, giving, etc., then ask, what can I, where can I be more of what I want? When you become the person that you want others to be, many conflicts dissolve away because you don't resist the lack of certain attributes in others and aren't attached to them being what you think you need. So, as you can probably tell, guys, in this you know, short 15-20 minute video, there's a huge amount of things. You could take one of these and, and play with it. Um, there's a huge amount of things to play with. Um, and uh, I talk, the other top tips are you know, to take everything as an invitation to love better, uh, stop shooting all over your relationship and uh, there's a few more um, and finally I end uh, this chapter I think yes I end this chapter with uh, using uh, the CAM cure to cure common relationship issues and the ones I focus on are the three uh, main ones that show up time and time again uh, with people that I'm working with the first is eternally single uh, how to use the CAM cure if you're eternally single and, and you want to meet uh, a, a life partner um, the second uh, thing I, I help you to apply a cam cure to is uh, a broken heart. So if you've, if you've been through a relationship breakup, even if you're in a new relationship now, but you haven't quite healed a relationship from the past, and you still find that person showing up in your mind occasionally, um, or a lot, when there's like a, a heavy feeling when you do, then a uh, broken heart, uh, I talk about how to yeah, get peace with that. Um, and, it, and I emphasize that, that other, it's not the relationship breaking up that is actually causing your inner distress, but it's your relationship with the relationship breaking up. And the stuff that's happening with you on your side of the fence, that if you resolve that, then you can be at peace uh, with it. I also have an a article, a blog, a article on my blog about that too. Um, and I also talk about sex and talk about how sex is a hot topic in many relationships, highlighting much conditioning that's coming between couples and preventing them from enjoying what is a beautiful way to connect, be fully seen, be vulnerable, celebrate love and have fun. For many, sex has become nothing more than a habitual physical act or a way to let off some steam, while for others it can be used to pacify a lack of inner love or low self-esteem. Those raised with religion can be taught that sex is a sin outside of marriage or if it's not to conceive, often causing guilt or shame. And so explore Beyond the physical sensations, how does sex make me feel? And then you can use the cam cure to heal relationship with this sacred and sublime act so that you can enjoy, enjoy a healthy and happy sex life. And then I share a case study of someone that I work with uh, to help them uh, enjoy a better sex life. And so again, I'm sure that might be relevant for a couple of people watching this. They might want to enjoy that a little bit more. Uh, and finally, 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 I end this chapter uh, with uh, a bit called No Reason Not to Love. No Reason Not to Love. And uh, I basically talk about how if you keep playing with this, uh, you will discover that if you clear the conflict, you run out of reasons not to love. You know the conditions I talked about at the beginning of this video? You run out of reasons not to love. Um, and I share, uh, commit to connecting fully and freely by clearing conditioned conflict and you will inevitably run out of reasons not to love. When this happens, you discover the home of oneness-infused peace, love and happiness has always been in your own heart. Has always been in your own heart. So I hope you've enjoyed this little unexpected extract uh, from uh, Cam here. I'm calling them unexpected because you will see that the title of the book is The Unexpected Way to... Oh, the mailman's arriving. That's nice of him. Uh, so, the unexpected way to improve your health, your life, and your world. And so I, I thought I'd do some unexpected uh, Facebook Lives and unexpected extracts. If you're just joining us now, because we've got quite a few people on the line now, um, 
make sure you do watch the recording. We share a, I share a lot, uh, so the replay will be available. I share a lot uh, during this uh, video, all about how you can enjoy uh, more radiant relationships. You can uh, experience much more unconditional love. Stop playing uh, the habits of unhealthy relationships and experience uh, the inner presence of being that is love and so much more. So much we've covered in the last few minutes. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to do a couple more of these, uh, especially uh, before the book comes out. The book comes out on Tuesday. Uh, if you are inspired to uh, grab a copy of the book, please do so. Um, I have a pre-order uh, competition and gifts uh, that, I'm, that I'm running right now until Tuesday. Uh, that's the 2nd of May. If you go to sandynewbeginning.com forward slash pre-order cam cure uh, or just go to my website and you'll find a link uh, there easily you can uh, f f buy, the, buy the book pop your receipt number into the form and I'm giving away some of my limited edition candles which are lovely scented uh, candles that I've helped uh, I've designed and uh, created with my, my friend who owns Just Be Botanicals um, you can win a coaching package with me worth a thousand pounds or you can um, uh, what else is there uh, you get access to a, 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 a Hay House uh, conference talk that I did that is not available anywhere else. Uh, it's one of my favorite talks I did for Hay House, uh, my publishers. And so you get uh, a, a access to that. There's a webinar that I'm running on the 11th of, of May, uh, my book launch webinar, where you can come on and you can ask me questions and I can give you more uh, advi advice from the book. So there's loads of stuff happening uh, to celebrate the launch of one of my favorite books ever. Um, and uh, so thank you so much. Uh, for giving it a shot, checking it out, and uh, pre-ordering it before Tuesday. Uh, or if you're watching this later, getting yourself a copy uh, uh, nonetheless. Uh, so I think that's about it. Have the intention to move from conflict to connection. Clear the unconscious conflicts that are standing between you and unconditional love. And rest into the presence of your being, which is love. When you no longer have to look for love on the outside, fear falls away. And you get to uh, love fully and freely. So thank you so much, guys, and uh, until we next speak, I wish you infinite peace and limitless love. Bye for now.